Good morning, Grace. Uh, this morning I've asked the staff uh, just to share some thoughts and some feelings about uh, the things happening in society, the death of George Floyd, and, and, uh, and just to share their hearts. Uh, so um, as I think about how the events surrounding George Floyd's death impacted me, I uh, had stopped really watching the news, and so I really wasn't aware of what was going on. My father called me up one one day and, and he just happened to mention, he said, what do you think about that? And I said, dad, I'm, I'm not even sure. Uh, so I got my uh, um, computer and went on the internet and uh, really was sort of horrified with what I saw. I, man, my heart just, my heart hurt. But my first thought was, oh no, not, not again. We had just had something else happen and uh, it was, it was heart, it was, it was disheartening and, and uh, as I watched it and I, I thought, I'm watching a person being murdered before my eyes. And I, it, it just concerned me that even after his body went limp, this person stayed on his neck. And uh, so I understand the frustration, I, I, I really do. Um, I thought to myself, man, this, is, this shouldn't be happening here. Uh, and then I thought, this is, this could be my son. This this could be my grandson. This could be my brother, my father. This this could this could be me, and 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 we really have to have some changes. As as, as the thing went on, uh, and as the days went by, and you had the protest and things like that, I I was I was disheartened by uh, somehow the protest went. I, I wish the media would have focused a little more on uh, the positive and peaceful protest and not necessarily night after night after night seeing the negative things that went on. And, and my concern was that because of the negative things that were happening, we were going to miss the message, a message that this country really needs to hear, uh, that there are injustices in the way that law enforcement does and in the legal system. And I was really afraid we were going to miss the message. But uh, my, my heart cried out for the family uh, and, and for our country. I felt very ill prepared for 2020 um, and I'm feeling so many things uh, sad and angry very disappointed hopeless uh, hearing the news of George Floyd and Ahmaud Aubrey and Breonna Taylor um, just brought this sadness and frustration um, and pain and there's a long list that we've accumulated for years and so you have these thoughts of, here we go again, but you also don't want to be complacent. You also don't want to just overlook what's going on. And so you have these feelings of sadness because of the lives lost, but also why are we still here? Um, I've had personal conversations and I've observed some of the comments and things said from people. And it's been very, very tough to hear um, and trouble, it's troubled me a lot because um, of the racism and some of the prejudices that are still around, especially from our Christian community, especially from people that claim to know God. My husband and I have had conversations about what do we teach our kids, when, how, and what do we teach our kids? When is a good time to explain to them these hard truths? Um, so we've just been in prayer just constant prayer because we do need Jesus at this time. When I first saw the news of what happened in Minneapolis, my first emotion was anger at, at an abuse of power and then sadness at a loss of life. And, but immediately following was like this hope that there was action being taken quickly. Everybody seemed to be on the same page that this was bad and needed to be dealt with. And then came the protest and then the riots. And what really frustrated me was that we had a moral issue where a man was killed and rather than going to the church or the scriptures to figure out how to deal with it, we went to our political leaders and our pundits to ask and of course what happened was division and anger and since then just seeing the division spread and the anger spread and even into the church and that's since then really my primary emotion has been sadness and really broken heartedness over the condition of division. Well, you know, as an African-American woman, I believe that the modern-day lynching of George Floyd, it has been just a 
an incredibly tumultuous event. It has affected me mentally and emotionally to my core, and it's truly disheartening to see that racism still runs rampant across our nation, across the globe, and just unjust actions continue to happen without just penalty. Um, you know, as a resident of Washington, D.C., I live five minutes from the Capitol building, I live 10 minutes from the White House, and, you know, those are two critical areas for protests, and just to be in the midst of all that has left me numb, it's left me immobile, and I've just been asking God a lot of questions. How can I respond? How can I be an advocate of change while bringing glory and honor to Him? How can I continue to show your love? and? You know, I believe that he's even giving us strategies even now, especially his people, to continue to live out his grace, to live out his love in the midst of everything that's going on. Um, I know that the entire world has been shaken by this event, even the black community, um, but it is pushing us out of our comfort zone and into a, a place of godly love and godly change. Me personally, it's been um, a sense of bafflement and, and sadness. Uh, you think of uh, when people die or are bluntly uh, put to death or murdered, um, it's sort of a, 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 a just an unpleasant feeling knowing that there's family members attached, loved ones attached, and you, you feel for the family and you feel for the people that are surrounding that person. Um, baffled in that, are we really at this place again? was what my thought was. Um, are we really back to where we are um, in this country um, and around the world in this very situation um, that we've seemingly kind of seen over and over and over again? Um, and I know for me personally and for my wife, it was a sense of we need to pray about this because there's nothing um, that myself or my wife can do about that situation in, in and of itself or any of the situations that have happened, but we can pray and we can ask God to intervene uh, for the family, for um, the people that were friends uh, with the individuals, and we can ask God to control the situation, which he's already there in the midst of, um, but we just asked and pleaded God to work, um, and I feel like that's starting to happen. So some of the positive things I've seen come out of this in society, in the church. First, the society is causing conversation. It's making people talk about things that are needed to be talked about. It's bringing awareness to issues that have been going on for a long time that we've not dealt with. And so it's bringing this awareness. Uh, that's, that, that's really, really important. Um, in society, I'm hoping there's change. I'm, I'm hoping that this is not just giving lip service until things blow over, but there's really gonna be change in society, there's gonna be change that people are gonna to get together and talk about things. Uh, change in the way policing is done, change in recruitment, change in training, change in relationships with communities, uh, change in the legal system. And so I'm hoping this is really gonna bring uh, some change. But my also heart I'm hoping is for peace. I'm hoping, and that's my prayer, that there would be peace, that God would give peace and unity in society. And, and, and then I'm praying for God's will. I don't know what God's doing, but I'm praying that his will would be done and the gospel would be advanced. My hope is just to get to the heart of the matter. There's been a lot of coming together, people fighting together, protests, conversations for equality and injustice, which is great. Um, but when this all dies down, what next? What is, what is going to happen? Are we going to continue this cycle? Um, and I think it really has to do with the condition of your heart. Where is your heart at? What have, have you had a time of self-reflection? Have you had a time to really, really figure out what the heart of the matter is in these situations for yourself? I think it's very, very important. I know I've reached out to a lot of people uh, during this time uh, just to, to be able to hear, to be able to listen, to be able to understand. Because um, my situation is not like a lot of people from, especially this area. I grew up in an area where we had one black person in my entire high school. Um, and coincidentally or not, we, we were actually friends. Um, and we, uh, we had a good, good relationship. But my experience wasn't really that um, diverse until I came to college in Lanham, Maryland at Washington Bible College. And so I've learned over time um, just to be open and to love people. Um, in some ways, it's a fault of mine that I give people the benefit of the doubt. Um, 
irregardless of what they look like, what their experience has been, um, my job is to love them. My job is to care for them and make sure that they're, they're better after being with me than they were before. And um, so for me personally, I've tried to reach out um, to friends that I've made here uh, at, at the church and through the school. Um, I've also reached out to um, family members that I've, I've ha I have adopted family members from different races, and I've tried to understand and see um, what they've experienced um, and try to just hold that dear to my heart and then move forward to see how I can help personally. Um, it's not easy uh, to go outside of a comfort zone or to ov open yourself to um, getting into someone else's situation, but I feel like that's what God's calling everyone to do is to show empathy. And empathy means to feel what others feel. And um, right now we have a very big group of people that is mourning and we need to mourn with those who mourn and we need to reach out to them and love them like God would love them. I do pray that this will draw attention to some things that need to be changed, some systemic things that need to be changed. Um, but I don't have a lot of hope for a political solution or even a legal solution. So what I'm really hoping for is that the church will find its voice and that she'll learn how to speak into these issues that are moral and speak in a way that brings glory and honor to God and motivates his people to do what's right. Well, despite what we see, God is always at work and he's creating a blueprint filled with kingdom strategies for his people to execute. And although the past two weeks have been very difficult, they've been arduous across the world, I've seen people from all different races, nationalities, ethnical backgrounds just come together and show love and support each other like never before. Um, from a personal standpoint, God deals with me uniquely. He deals with me creatively and gives me um, just unique ideas to respond to the world. For instance, last week, um, he commissioned me, if you will, to write a series of short pieces, and I entitled the short work, Love, War, and Peace, and each piece had a scriptural reference to it, and it was a response, an artistic response, to Blackout Tuesday, which was a socially conscious movement on social media to bring awareness and justice for George Floyd. Um, the week before that, God had placed into my spirit to go and pray at the Capitol building. And I was like, well, you know, God, why do you want me to go pray at the Capitol building? This is before all the protests and the riots, you know, broke out and everything. And so when I arrived there, he said that this is the place, well, he reminded me that this is the place where his laws, um, where the, the nation's laws and actions are put into place. And so he told me to pray that his laws, God's laws and God's ways um, be written on tablets of the hearts and minds of men, the hearts and minds of political leaders who can bring about change to the world. So in essence, he told me to pray no other idols before him. Um, and so it's my prayer that the church will continue to respond with a nowness, to respond with now messages, with now prayers, now music, now sounds from heaven, as we continue to implement his blueprint, his kingdom strategies that will bring about godly change on earth. I think for so long, uh, our, the church as a whole, not necessarily our church, but the church as a whole has been very silent on a lot of these issues um, that are systemic problems. And honestly, we can't just ride the wave. Um, a lot of times we, we don't have all the answers to the tough topics because quite frankly a lot of people in churches don't study the Bible and therefore they don't know the issues and they don't know the answers to the questions that scripturally were given. And a lot of times we take a back seat, we ride the wave, and we hope that we come out on the other end of the wave um, kind of unscathed uh, from the situations that are at hand. And I think we need to do a better job of getting out in front. It's kind of like our inheritance. God has called us to be salt and to be light. And when we aren't those things, darkness creeps in. And um, we need to be able to start being more hopeful and more of a positive influence on our society. And that happens as a collective church, not necessarily individual churches, but as collective churches that are going to come together in uncommon unity and uncommon harmony as we work together and do our own separate things in the same way, in the same accord, in the same direction. Um, I feel like in our church, the best thing we can do is something that we've, we've often said and often uh, plan to do is to love Clinton. We need to love this community as diverse as it is. Um, that's age range, that's race, that's everything. We need to love Clinton for Clinton. And um, 
best way we can do that is to unapologetically love people, and that's all people. Um, whether it's their race or their sexual orientation or whatever it might be, um, we need to be able to love them with uncommon love, love that only can come from God. And um, that's the best way as a church that we can do directly in our community. We want our community to know that we love them and that we are for them. In the church, my, my heart really is, is for the church. And I would say the church is also, I'm seeing communication and I'm hoping that we'll, there will be more communication in this area. And, and actually, as a church, we're hoping to have some events to help, di help that dialogue, to bring that dialogue about. Um, so there's change there. I'm praying for unity. I'm praying that this thing would not divide us, but this would give us unity. This would unify us in this. And then I'm praying for God's love. I'm praying that God would teach us how to love one another with a biblical love and then share that love with the world. Uh, God's called us to be lights and salt. And so I'm praying that in these areas and other areas, the church would become the light, that we would be leading the way instead of following. And we would be the salt that's going to make people thirsty for God and have the impact that God has placed us to have uh, in, in, in the world that he's, that he's placed us. And, 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 and I'm praying for God's will, again, to be done in this thing. And I'm asking God, what, what's, what's your will? What, what is it that, you, that, that you're doing uh, during this, this time? We look at um, our church and we see how diverse our church is. And we, we are excited about the multicultural congregation that we have here. And it's great. But on Sunday, we fellowship together. But in the rest of the days of the week, what are we doing? Are we still exemplifying that love of Christ? Are we still showing our children um, what we teach them in school with red or yellow, black and white or blue? It doesn't matter because everybody's precious in his sight. Is, are we showing those things to our kids? We have a huge opportunity as a multicultural church to make a stand and be the change um, right now. So what are we teaching our children? Are we teaching them to see, to see color, to see the beauty that God created, to respect it, to love it, to listen to it, to understand its point of view? Are we showing that love of Christ and are we teaching our kids to have a better future? And how are we as a church impacting our community for the kingdom? I feel like in our church, the best thing we can do is something that we've, we've often said and often uh, planned to do is to love Clinton. We need to love this community as diverse as it is. Um, that's age range, that's race, that's everything. We need to love Clinton for Clinton. And the um, best way we can do that is to unapologetically love people. And that's all people, um, whether it's their race or their sexual orientation or whatever it might be. Um, we need to be able to love them with uncommon love, love that only can come from God. And um, that's the best way as a church that we can do directly in our community. We want our community to know that we love them and that we are for them. I'm praying that we would be the light that God wants us to be and the salt in, 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 in the world that, that we would lead instead of following. And, and, and as, as I think through that, I'm also praying that God would give us the courage to speak up against things that we need to speak up, that the church has been silent, that God would give us the courage to speak up about those things. And, and, and my concern is I don't wanna just do things to do things. I don't wanna just do things to say that we, we did it, but I want us to do what God wants us to do, things that are gonna have a lasting impact and glorify God for eternity. So the question I'm asking myself is, is this, the question I'm asking myself is, is this, God, what are you doing and how does Grace Brethren Church join you? How do we join you in what we're doing? I'm hoping that we're gonna grow deeper through this, that we're gonna grow deeper together and have a greater impact on the world. Now, one of the things that happened as we went through this, um, back in May, March, we, we, had, we had a fast and we didn't know this coronavirus thing was gonna happen, but we had had a fast and through the middle of that fast, God used this coronavirus to prepare our hearts for what was going on. We started the book of Philippians and uh, we had no idea we were gonna be facing these things in society, the death of, of two African-American men and how that was gonna impact that. And I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, do we need to change where we're going? Do we need to change our message? And, and, and I sensed the Lord just said, 
stay right where you are. I've placed you right where you are. You stay right where you are. And that was important to, to, to understand that. So as we're going through the book of Philippians, I, I, as, as you look at what we're talking about today and even last week, the oneness in the body and putting other people first, it fits perfectly. God knew exactly where he wanted us to be at this time. And so that's my prayer that God would use this. I'm not saying God may not change messages in the future, but right now we're, we're, we're falling where God wants us to be. And so I'm praying for Pastor Hunt as he comes forward and gives us the message that God has placed on his heart out of Philippians.